All right, so today we're going to be learning about calculus. It's strange because this is a math concept. However, this is physics C, and C stands for calculus. And you need to know a bit of calculus in order to know, uh, be able to do things in this chapter, whether this is a recap or something you've never learned before. I want to just be going over the important kinds of information you need to know in order to solve calculus problems in this class. So calculus, the branch of mathematics that deals with the finding properties of derivatives and integrals of functions by methods originally based on the summation of infinitesimal differences. So probably doesn't make much sense to you, but we're going to talk about what it all means. So derivatives, that's what we're first going to be talking about. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, looking at these two graphs, which one can you find the instantaneous velocity at 15 seconds? And which one can you not? Also explain why you can't find the instantaneous velocity for that graph. So it's interesting to know, you might look at this and be like, uh, I can't find the instantaneous uh, velocity for both of them. But we know that this one on the left here, this has a linear model. This is a linear model, meaning it's moving at a constant velocity. So we can find what that constant velocity is, and then we can find exactly how fast it's going because it's moving at a constant speed. However, this one we might have a harder time trying to be able to find what a what the constant velocity what the velocity is at 15 meters per second. We might say uh, velocity is distance over time. So what we could do is if we know the distance at this this point and then the distance at this point, maybe we could find what the velocity is. However, you're going to notice a problem because since it's not linear then that's not going to tell us what the exact velocity is at this point. So what you can think about is, okay, well, what if I made these two points closer? Like, what if I made it here and here? Then it's like, that's true. That is closer to the velocity of what that is. But we still don't know what the velocity is at exactly 15. So what that's what that's a lot about what derivatives is all about, is being able to get closer and closer to find what this is. So what we're trying to do in calculus is we're trying to get so close, have two dots so close to each other that we can find the slope at that point and be able to find what that velocity is at that instant. And that's a little bit about what derivatives is and what derivatives tries to do. So let's look at some examples with this. So finding derivatives, what I'm just going to be talking about right now is using the power rule. Okay, so this is the formula for the power rule. If you're taking calculus, you've already known this, but if you don't, then you don't. So we can see whatever the function is, the derivative of that is going to be equal to the n times whatever this is, uh, and then over n minus 1. So let me give you an example. So when, if we have a function here, 3x over 5, so let's just say 3x as square root of 5. And then so the derivative of this, uh, let's see. So this is the function. The derivative of this is going to be equal to 3 times 5, so 15x, oh, uh, uh, to the power of 5 minus 1, which is 4. Okay? And that's the power rule. That's how you do it. Okay? So this is the main kind of rule that you're going to be using to find derivatives. So let's look at some examples. So let's look at this. It says derive, derive the following function. f is f of x equals 3x minus 2. So what we can see here is this is just a linear line. We can see that this is just a linear line. So in order to find what this is going to be, we can just actually kind of find the slope of this. So if we were to look at this point right here, let's see, and then we were to look at this point right here, the rise would be negative 2 to 1. So that's going to be 3. And the run would be 0 to 1, so that's going to be 3 over 1. So what's the slope? It's going to be equal to the rise, 3 over 1, and it's going to equal 3. So if we were to find the derivative of this, what we, what we get is this is going to be equal to 3 and then x to the power. And we can see that this power is actually an uh, invisible 1, right? So then this is going to be 3. And this, then it's going to be um, x to the power of 1 minus 1, which is 0. So then this just becomes 1. And then since there's nothing here, it's going to be minus 0. So then it's going to be equal to 3. And we can see that's the same thing as what we just got. We got the slope, which is equal to 3. Okay? And we, we found this using doing calculus and using the power rule. All right, let's look at the next uh, equation. It says, 
derive the following function. So this time we can't just find the slope because we see that it's angled like this and there's no clear linear line. So if we look at this, now we're going to have to try to use the power rule in order to find what this, uh, this function is equal to. So it's going to do negative 2x, and then we're going to subtract this by 1. So this is just me 1, or I'm just going to leave it like that. Plus the 4, uh, there's a 1 here, so bring that to 4, and then plus 0. So this is what it's going to be equal to. Okay. And what's in interesting to know is, if I was to ask you, at one point would this uh, have a zero slope? You might think, oh, you know, the slope would be zero at the very top over here. Okay? That's pro probably if anywhere. If we had two small points right here, when we get the slope of that, that would be a zero slope. And so that's at what? Uh, position two. So and we can also notice if we put in two right here, we would get this function is equal to zero. Okay, so this is giving us pretty much what the slope would be at any given position or at any given point. Okay. All right, now let's look at this one, derive the following equation. Uh, so again, it's going to be negative, bringing this 2 down, x, and then we're going to have a 1 plus 12. Okay, and that's what the derivative of this function is equal to. Again, we can see, okay, where would the, where would the slope be 0? We can see right here, it's going to be at 6. And see, again, when we put a 6, we have a 0. Okay, so this is giving us the slope at any given instant or at any given position. Okay. All right, so now let's do some problems more based on physics. So the following function represents the path taken by an object. x is equal to 4t squared minus 3t plus 2, where x is the object position and t is time. Where is the instantaneous velocity of the object at, three, at t equals 3 seconds? So what we should know is for position versus time graph, the slope of that gives you a velocity versus time, right? So the slope gives you velocity versus time. So that's the same thing. What we can do here is we know position is equal to 4t squared minus 3t plus 2. We can find what the velocity is at any given point by finding the derivative of this. So the derivative of this... Uh, we call this dx over dt. It's going to be equal to 4t squared. So it's going to be 8t minus 3. Okay. And this is the same thing as a velocity as a function of time is equal to 8t minus 3. And this, what's this saying? At 3 seconds. So let's see. At We want to know this at 3 seconds. So we're going to get rid of this t. And we're going to put 3 seconds. So 1624 minus 3, so this is going to be equal to 21 meters per second. Okay? And then we see that we have an answer right here of A. All right, let's look at this. So the following function represents the path taken by an object, x equals 4t squared minus 3t plus 2, where the x is the position and t is in time. At what time is the velocity of the object 29 meters per second? Okay. So again, same thing. We have position versus time. We have the position as a function of time is equal to 4t squared minus 3t plus 2. And we should know the derivative of this will give us the velocity uh, as a function of time. So this is going to be 8t minus 3. And we want to know at what time is this going to be equal to 29 meters per second. So we can erase that and put 29. And then we could do a little bit of math. So plus this, so 32 is equal to 8t, and then we can say that t is equal to 4 seconds. All right? All right, now let's look at this. Uh, same kind of problem. So following function represents the path taken by an object, x equals 4t squared minus 3t plus 2, where x is the object's position and t is time. What is the instantaneous acceleration of the object at t equals 3 seconds? So this time we're looking for acceleration, not velocity. So again, what we should know is Position versus uh, time, the slope of that will give you velocity versus time. But we should also know the slope of a velocity versus time gives you an acceleration versus time. So we should know that if we take two derivatives of the position versus time, that will give us the acceleration. So if we know position versus time is equal to 4t squared minus 3t plus 2, we should know the velocity versus t is the first derivative, 8t minus 3, and the second, the derivative of this one gives us acceleration as a function of time, which is going to be 8, 
Okay, so then we can find that the acceleration of the function of time is just 8 meters per second squared. Let's look at this. The following function represents the path taken by an object. x equals 4t squared minus 3t plus 2, where x is the object's position and t is time. At what time is acceleration of the object 10 meters per second squared? So again, what we see is x as a function, a position as a function of time, 4t squared minus 3t plus 2. We see that the velocity as a function of time is equal to 8t minus 3. And acceleration as a function of time is going to be 8. So we don't see that this is actually, there's no function of time. The acceleration is just always 8. So we can see that it's never going to be 10 meters per second squared. So that's never going to happen. So this is none here. Okay. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. This, If you could do this one, you should mostly be pretty good for these kind of problems. A car stops, starts from a stop sign and moves along a straight road, so its position as a function of time is represented by the following formula. Position t equals alpha t squared minus beta t cubed, where alpha is equal to 1.8 meters per second squared and beta is equal to 0 0.08 meters per second cubed. Calculate the average velocity of the car from t equals 0 to t equals 5. So this is saying average velocity. It is not saying instantaneous velocity. So what we want to do, so we know position as a function of time is equal to alpha, which is 1.8 t squared minus beta 1.8, oh, not 1.8, 0 0.08, dun, 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 0 0.08 t cubed. So what we want to do here, we want to find the average velocity. So we want to know where the car is at 5 seconds and where the car is at 0 seconds. So position of car at 5 seconds is equal to 1.85 squared minus 0.085 uh, cubed. And let me just figure out what that is. 1.8 times 5 squared minus 0.085 cubed. And we get 35 meters. And then we could see, okay, where is the car at 0 seconds? And if we plugged in 0, we can see that this is going to be just 0. So then we know that the average velocity is going to be equal to, uh, velocity is equal to final position minus initial position over t. So this will be equal to final position, which is 35, initial position, which is 0, and time, which is 5 seconds. So this is going to equal 7 meters per second. Okay. So let's do part B. Part B here says calculate the instantaneous velocity of the car at t equals 0, t equals 5, and t equals uh, 10 seconds. So again, we know that the position versus time uh, is equal to 1.8 t squared minus 0.08 t cubed. So the velocity as a function of time is going to equal 3.6 t minus uh, Point um, 16, 24, point 0.24 t squared. So we know at 0 seconds, uh, the velocity is going to be equal to 0. So it's going to be 0. At 5 seconds, so we're going to plug in 5 over here. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll just write it down actually. V, whoopsies, whoopsies. So we can see V5 is equal to 3.6, 5 minus 0.24, 5 squared. And this is going to give us, let me just put this in the calculator, 3.65 or 3.6 times 5 minus 0.24 times 5 squared. And we get 12 meters per second. So then it's going to be 12 meters per second. And then lastly, at 10 seconds, V. 10 is equal to 3.6, 10 minus 0.24, 10 squared. Let's see what we get, 3.6 times 10 minus 0.24 times 100 or 10 squared. And again, we get 12 meters per second. Mm, so it seems like it's starting to slow down at this point because the car is coming back around. A little hard to understand, but that's what's happening. So now, let's look at part C. Calculate the time it takes for the car to begin be at rest again. Okay, so actually we could kind of stay at this. So we, we want to find when the velocity is equal to zero. So 
So velocity is going to be equal to 0. So 0 is equal to 3.6t minus 0.24t squared. So if you do a little bit of math, 0.24t squared is equal to 3.6t. One of the t's cancel out. And 0.24 divided by 3.6 or I should say, sorry, 3.6 divided by 0.24 is going to be equal to 15 seconds. So this is going to be at time equals 15 seconds. It's again going to be at rest. Okay. So then now let's do part D. D is how far from the starting point will the car be at rest? Okay. So now we can do the position versus time again. Uh, this is going to be equal to, let's see, position versus time. 1.8 t squared minus 0 0.08 t cubed. So position as a function of time at 15 seconds. So 1.8 uh, time 15 squared minus 0 0.08 15 cubed. And let's see where we are at this point. Okay, 15 squared times 1.8 minus 0 0.08 times 15 cubed. So we are at 135 meters out. And then last one, what is the acceleration of the car at t equals 3 seconds? So we found what the velocity is as a function of time, 3.6 minus 0.24t squared. So let's find another derivative of that. So acceleration as a function of time is going to be equal to 3.6 minus 0.48t. So then let's find this at 3 seconds. So A3 is equal to 3.6 minus 0.48 times 3. Whoopsies, 3. And this will give us 3.6 minus 0.48 times 3. Uh, 2.16 meters per second squared. Woo! Hopefully you guys got all that and that made sense. And uh, I'll see you in the next one when we learn about integ integration, second part of calculus, or second main topic of calculus.